Hello everybody, welcome to the 10th and uh, probably final image recognition uh, tutorial video where we left off, uh, we were just comparing pixel by pixel to decide which pattern matched best and then obviously comparing with examples from an OCR and uh, where we left off, that's what we had done and uh, surprisingly made it with this awesome drawing of the number three by me. Now what I would like to do is not only uh, depict it in number form, but also show it visually. And then why don't we actually try it against a few other examples? Because uh, surely uh, we won't be perfect every time. And so that will bring up the next question of threshold. Where would we decide we're good or whatnot? So anyway, uh, I'll put this away for now. And now what we want to do is graphically represent what we just did. So what we're going to do is... Um, just basically come down here and let's make some space and now what we're going to want to do is we're going to say because we want to graph everything in this counter and dealing with this counter is kind of finicky uh, so what we're going to do, I guess what we'll do here is we'll do graph x equals an empty array and graph y equals an empty array so obviously what's going to go in here is x variables and y variables next thing we're going to want to say is for each thing in x um, just so we know what we're doing, let's go ahead and print each thing just to make sure we're on the right track. And what we're going to want to do is, because x is our counter, and each thing in x should, because it's, it's a dictionary, so x will correspond to the key. So in a dictionary you have a key and a value. And the key is the first element and the value is the second element. So x should correspond to, and x is going to be our x value, so on the bottom of our graph, we're going to have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then on our y-axis will be how close, or like the, uh, we'll make a bar chart basically of how similar, and um, it'll be awesome. So anyways, x will be that number, so we're, then we're going to say is graph x dot append, and we're just going to append each thing. Subsequently, let's make sure we're still on the right track, and we'll say print x each thing. So this is the dictionary. What is the value of the key of each thing from X? And that should print out the numerical, how many matches had it found. So then we're going to say graph Y dot append. And we just want to append X each thing. Cool. And now let's see. That's good for now. Um, so now what we're going to want to do is we're going to say figure equals plot dot figure figure. And then we're going to say AX1 equals plot subplot to grid. And then let's just make this grid really simple. We're going to make it a 4x4. Four four. Uh, this one will start oops, at 0, 0. And it's going to row span 1. So only take up one row. And then it's going to column span uh, 4 columns. And then let me just do a nice sexy copy paste, working smart, not hard, change it to AX2, still a 4x4, four four. this one starts at 1, 1, it's going to be uh, span 3 rows, and that's it, quick glance, make sure we did that nice copy and paste job, good, AX1.mshow, IAR, easy, easy, yeah, that sounds familiar, now we're going to do a bar, bar chart, now a bar chart uh, is something we haven't covered, and actually, I don't even have a video tutorial on bar charts. Uh, it's included in a lot of my videos, but I don't have just a pure bar chart video. So if you haven't seen it, it's pretty simple stuff. AX2.bar. And then in here you just X variables, uh, graph Y variables. And then we're going to do something cool. And we're going to say align equals center. And the only time you would ever want to do this is when your X variables are like a name or a date or... Uh, something like that, I suppose. I guess date doesn't sound too crazy of a thought, but um, you basically so like the ticks, right? The the actual labels are, are going to be in the center of the bar, so it makes it just really easy to read because natively the tick will be on the left hand side of the bar, and the bar will pour over the right hand side, and it just kind of looks funky. So now the next thing that we're going to want to do is we said that we wanted to set some sort of threshold. And in my opinion, if it's less than 400 pixels similar, 
it's it, it's highly likely to be a mistake or a very poorly drawn image. So I'm pretty surprised that our three even passed that test, but it did. So anyways, 400, we'll just say that. So that basically limits the y-axis to a 400. Next, we're going to say, uh, let's do AX. Uh, eh, let's just show it. Let's just see where we are right now. Uh, so then, what number is it? Cool. So save, run. Well, anyway, printed out a whole bunch of stuff here. I, we don't really need to be printing out any of this, but you've seen all of this. So uh, zero, there were 397 matches. One, there was 309. Two, 405. Three, 427, and so on. And then you should have also got this. So, oops, come back over. So this is the number that we drew. Looks familiar. And then these are our matches, but as you can see, our x variables are kind of eh. And two is correctly marked. This is obviously uh, the three, right? But we're not, we don't see it. So let's go ahead and fix that real quick. Let me move this over, and we'll just come right down here. And we're gonna say x location, and then this will oops x location equals plot dot max n locator. And we're just going to put a 12 in here. So that basically says like how many are, are the maximum values that will show on the x-axis. And since we want 0 through 9 to show up, and then we also, um, like, since the bar, we said bar aligns center. So that means if everything is filled, a bar chart in the center would pour over the uh, y-axis uh, if, if we did this. So there must be a negative 1 var variable to the uh, right, and then there's also going to be a number 10 variable to the left. Therefore, we must say 12, not 10. Moving right along, uh, we're going to say ax2.xaxes.set underscore major underscore locator, and we're going to set that to x look, and that should solve all of our problems. Nice. So now it looks very clear to us, okay, so what's this number most likely? Well, it's most likely a 3. So now let's close this, and let's run another number, shall we? So I'll delete, grab that pencil, let's make a 7. That should, oh, that's a kind of a shitty 7, but excuse my language. Save that, and let's see if, if we match uh, the 7. Run that, plot it up. Sure enough, the only number that even was recognized was a 7. Nice job, guys. Let's do another one. I'm trying to think of a better one. Like four is a good one that like alignment would matter, and then also like um, if you did any blurring. So there's a four. Save that and let's run that. And I wonder if that'll match. Sure enough, that four matched. But okay, I'm, I was thinking that uh, at least this part was was poorly drawn. But let me just shift this over. So I'll shift over to uh, the right. So this is an example where you would want to have some sort of centering function because this probably won't match a 4. I'm going to be really surprised if it does because we're like so stringent in our matching. Um, there we go. Cool, cool. So it matched a sort of a 3. 4 is not even shown, and it really matched a 9. <laughs> so one of our, uh, our uh, funky-looking 9s, apparently, so that we took a few examples of. So one, you could have a centering function. Two, you could, in your examples, you could take all of your examples and then uh, write a function to shift them over a little bit, shift them over a little bit, maybe shift them up a little bit, down a little bit, and so on. So you could do something like that as well, um, and, and that would solve the function, or you could have a centering function and stuff like that. But generally, a blurring is better. So well, what I mean by a blurring function is, so instead of like zero, like in theory, this is zero, zeros and ones, right? So zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one, zero, right? And instead what it should be is zero, zero, 25, 50, one, 50, 25, maybe 50, one, and so on. And so the closer you get to the, to the example, the better, but it's like if it missed it by one pixel, you're not like totally off. It's just maybe we're not so certain. Um, so you can do something like that as well. So I, I call that blurring. I'm not sure if what people call that, but um, that seems to work really well as well, especially when you have images on, like, say, a CAPTCHA, even though I'm, my goal isn't to teach you guys to read CAPTCHAs. But what they do is they make the letters, like, wavy on the CAPTCHA, and this solves that problem. So anyways, close out of this, and let's make another one. Um, 
and we'll just for now leave them centered even though I did did want to show you guys like what where this would go wrong um, it seems as though maybe I've closed out of paint I can't find it on my bar I guess I'll bring it up again so another one that I'm um, probably not gonna even be able to draw is a two so let's try a two so two, oh my god that's a horrible two <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and redo that, guys. Um, okay, that's good enough, I guess. So let's save that, and we'll put it over here. Let's run this. And, oh, wow, it actually got that, too. Cool. So anyway, you guys get the, get the point. You can play around with this all you want on your own and try out new numbers and stuff. Uh, it actually works pretty well, uh, given the extreme simplicity, nine examples, um, and all of that, it works pretty darn well. And I wonder, I wonder. Actually, I'm curious. We can do this test together. Let's see if this two matches. We shifted it over one. Um, oh, it matched even better this time around. Look at that, awesome. Anyway, so, um, so anyway, what I'll leave you guys with is kind of what I was saying before. And I actually, I think what I'm trying to say is represented really well by this matplotlib image of the number two, right? It that two is what you want to match against, right? So it's a perfect black versus kind of like a grayish. And you want to superimpose that onto the image, right? This might be the image, but then you want to later on blur that image a little bit so it looks like this, and then store it. And then you want to do a percent similarity between the numbers. And that'll give you a little bit of help. And you want to do all of that after thresholding, right? You, want, you don't want to be dealing with like blues and greens and stuff, right? Threshold it first, then blur it, then uh, compared to examples and that's actually got a really high accuracy rate it's it's um, about like 88 percent or something I mean and, and that's off something I made like in my free time so it's pretty accurate and as you can see this is actually already uh, pretty accurate um, and then it, as long as you like if you keep building up your examples and stuff um, you'll only continue to, to increase in accuracy so in that way it's kind of like a neural network and you could add in some some more uh, machine learning principles uh, to better this, but really, uh, as you can see, you just need examples, and you can fairly well recognize characters. So, uh, with that, I'm going to conclude this series. There might be future videos I add alongside here, but that covers pretty much all the stuff I really wanted to cover in this series. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Um, as always, thanks for watching, thanks for the support of the subscriptions, and until next time.